Hello everyone, welcome to Allen Digital and today we are going to learn about transformation of graphs. See what happens is we do know the graph of the basic functions but sometimes there is a slight modification or a variation of that graph is required. So what to do in these kind of situations we are going to look today. Okay. Alright, so if you have the graph of fx and you need to transform it to f of x plus a or f of x minus a or f of x plus a and f of x minus a. Let's understand this situation with, uh, uh, let me take an example here. Suppose you need to draw the graph of y minus 3 is equal to mod of x minus 2. Right. Think about it this graph would have looked exactly like y equal to mod x if the origin was at 2 comma 3. So what happened here is you had the graph of y equal to mod x which has been shifted to 2 comma 3. Right. So see the graph has shifted towards right by two units and the graph has been shifted upwards by three units. Alright, so if you understand this, huh, let's see how we can transform all of these kind of graphs. Okay. So when you have uh, f of x plus a, all you need to do is shift the graph of fx upwards by a units. Right. This is basically y is equal to fx plus a which is written as y minus a is equal to fx. Right. So the origin has been shifted to 0 comma a. Also you can think of it as see this is the graph of fx a constant is added to it so it will be shifted a unit upwards. Huh? You can we can also think of it that way. Alright so this is the graph of fx if I need to draw the graph of f of x plus a it shifts a unit upwards. All right. Now in the situation graph of uh, fx minus a. So this is y is equal to fx minus a. So the situation is y plus a is equal to fx. Hmm. So you can think of it as just the graph shifted a units downwards or the origin being shifted to 0 minus a. So 0 minus a means Got it? All right. Another situation that we had was uh, f of x minus a. Huh. Origin being shifted to a comma 0. So the graph will just shift a units rightwards. Yes? And for uh, f of x plus a, it will be a unit towards left. Right. So now we understand the translation variation. Okay, let's see how we can draw the graph of y equal to 1 plus sin x. We do know the graph of y equal to sin x, which looks like this. So this is y minus 1 is equal to sin x, right? All we need to do is shift the graph one unit upwards. That's it, right? Let's see another one. y equal to sin x minus 1. So this is y plus 1 is equal to sin x. Okay. We do know the graph of sin x. y plus 1 means it will be shifted one unit downwards. Yes? Okay. For y equal to sin of x minus 1. Huh, this is just y equal to sin x minus 1. This is the graph of sin x. x minus 1 means one unit rightwards. Alright, so when the point of intersection was n pi, now it has become n pi plus 1. Okay. And for the graph of y equal to sine of x plus 1, uh, we know this one now, that it will be shifted one unit towards left. That's it. So, your point of intersection with x-axis will become n pi minus 1. Yes? Alright, let's see another type. When we have to transform 
f of x to f of minus x. See, think of the function as a process where you give an input and you get an output. Here what is happening is when you give positive input, they act like negative inputs and the negative inputs will act like positive inputs. So, if you have, let's say, a graph like this. Huh. So, what is happening is, all the positive inputs, huh, whatever output you are getting from the positive inputs, you will get from the negative inputs now. And whatever values you are getting from the negative inputs, you will get from positive inputs now. So, it would look like this. Right. This will be the new graph. This will be f of minus x. So think about it, what exactly we have done over here. We have just taken the reflection of this graph in the y-axis and that is what you are going to do. When you need to transform fx to f of minus x, huh? let's say we have fx over here. So if you need to draw f of minus x, you are just going to take the reflection of this graph in the y-axis. Yes? All right. I need to draw the graph of y equal to e to the power minus x. Huh. So this is my e to the power x. Just take the reflection of this graph in the y-axis and done. All right. OK. Type 4, when fx transforms to minus fx, huh, this is just the graph, like whatever graph is for fx, you need to take the negative of that. What does that mean though? You have the graph of fx and you need to take the negative of that. So we are taking the reflection along the x-axis. All right, so when you need to draw the graph of minus fx, it is just the reflection along the x-axis. fx, take mirror image along the x-axis, that's it. Fine. Uh, huh, this one, I need to draw the graph of y equal to minus e to the power x. So this is e to the power x, take the reflection along the x-axis. This will be your graph of minus e to the power x. Yes? All right. The next one is y equal to minus x minus 1 whole square. So looks like we have mixed up two profiles here. Yes. So, okay. Uh, we do know the graph of uh, y equal to x square. Huh, that looks like this. For y equal to x minus 1 whole square, we just need to shift this graph one unit towards right. Okay. So this is the graph of y equal to x minus 1 whole square. For the negative of this graph, all you need to do is take the reflection of this along the x-axis. So, flip it. That's it. That's, that will be your required graph here. Fine? Okay. Uh, another profile that we have is f of x getting transformed to mod of fx. What does the mod do? It converts your negative values to positive and does not interfere with the positive ones. So if you have fx positive, it's going to keep the graph as it is. But wherever fx is negative, it is going to convert those values positive. Okay. So we need to take the mirror image in x-axis of the portion of the graph which lies below x-axis. So if the graph is, let's say, something like this. Whatever portion is above the x-axis, we don't need to interfere with that. Whatever portion is below the x-axis, so this goes and it, its reflection comes. This part goes and its reflection comes. So, all the graph will be above the x-axis and this will be the required graph there. Got it? Let's take some examples here. Hmm. We need to draw the graph of mod of ln x. So ln x we know, huh? ln x looks like this. All we need to do is remove this graph and take the reflection of this part in the x-axis. That's it. Okay, that will be your graph of mod ln x. 
फाइन मेक सेंस राइट एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस वन आई नीड टू ड्रॉ द ग्राफ ऑफ मॉड ऑफ एफ एक्स ओके सो एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस वन यू हैव वाई इज इक्वल टू एक्स स्क्वायर शिफ्टेड वन यूनिट डाउनवर्ड्स यस नाउ इफ यू नीड टू टेक द मॉड ऑफ इट दिस ग्राफ नीड्स टू गो एंड द रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ दिस ग्राफ विल कम That's it. All right. This will be the graph of mod of x square minus one. When f x transforms to f of mod x, huh? f of mod x. That means whatever negative inputs that were coming, now they will give the same output as the positive inputs. Right. See, if you have a graph, let's say something like this. so whatever positive inputs were there they'll they'll be the same as that ha huh? no no change in the positive side but for the negative side all the negative inputs now start behaving like positive inputs there and this graph will not exist so what you need to remember here is that positive inputs give the same out output as they were giving before but the negative inputs will start behaving like the positive ones leave the graph lying right side of the y axis take the image of fx in the y axis as the plane mirror the part of fx lying left of the y axis ha the same thing that i have said let's say we need to draw the graph of sin of mod x okay so this is sin x i'm going to leave this part as it is for this part i'm just going to take the reflection of this side along the y axis so this needs to go and the reflection of this part needs to come here all right this will be the graph of sin of mod x yes okay let's see the graph of uh, mod y equal to fx huh, a tricky one here so there are Uh, there can be positive or negative values of fx existing there the thing is fx can be greater than equal to 0 or fx can be less than 0 the problem here is if you have mod y equal to something negative ha huh, something negative this doesn't make sense so if you have let's say a graph like this wherever the graph is negative ha huh, this part needs to go because there won't be any value of y like that okay so this part needs to go whatever part is below the x axis needs to go for fx greater than equal to 0 ha huh, let's say this is some real value q so you have the situation mod y equal to q that means y is equal to plus minus q so for every value of x you have two values of y which is for plus q and minus q that means there will be a reflection of this part in the x axis whichever part is above the x axis will have to take the reflection of that as well because for every x there is the values of y which are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign remove the portion of the graph which lies below the x axis ha huh? because mod y equal to fx and when fx is negative it's not permissible plot the remaining portion of the graph and its mirror image in the x axis whatever part is left above the x axis you take the mirror image of that okay we need to draw the graph of uh, mod y equal to sin x this is sin x the part below the x axis needs to go okay this part should not exist so this needs to go now whatever part is above the x axis you need to have that part as well as the reflection of that part in the x axis so this this will be the graph of mod y equal to sin x all right hmm okay all right 
let's see how we can use this techniques of graph transformation in this question we have gx is equal to e to the power x minus mod of x square minus 4 and fx is given as a uh, box of fractional part of x then i need to find the solutions of fx equal to gx hmm. see boxes the box given there is the greatest integer function and uh, this one is the fractional part of function we do know this huh? now let's talk about f of x first okay so f of x is fractional part of x inside a box and we know that fractional part is just going to vary from 0 to 1 if something is just varying from 0 to 1 uh, less than 1 greater than equal to 0 so the greatest integer part of that is definitely going to be just 0 so this is just 0 and if I am equating fx equal to gx, so I have e to the power x minus mod of x square minus 4 equal to 0. So what am I actually calculating here? I am actually calculating the solutions of e to the power x equal to mod of x square minus 4. Right. Mod of x square minus 4 can also be written as x minus 2, x plus 2. And I do know how to plot this graph. Okay. So this graph is going to look something like this, hmm. where this is minus 2 and this is plus 2. This is the graph of x minus 2 into x plus 2, not the mod of it. If I am going to take the mod of it, then the negative part will get removed and the reflection of it will exist. Yes, so this part needs to go. The graph would look something like, okay, the graph would look something like this. Okay, this is the required graph. Huh. All right, now let's talk about uh, e to the power x. e to the power x, okay, also, also this point, this point if you think about is uh, just put x equal to 0 over there. Okay, if you put x equal to 0, you get mod of minus 4, which is 4. So this point is 4. Now e to the power x is going to start from here. It is going to intersect the y-axis at 1 and then because it is an exponential function, it is going to increase more rapidly than the algebraic one. So the point of intersection I get of the two graphs is 1, 2 and 3. Uh, these are the three point of intersections and that will be the number of solutions for fx equal to gx here. Got it? All right. So I hope you understood the techniques of transformations of graph today. They might not help you to solve the entire question, but they will definitely help you to analyze the question in a better way now. Okay, so that is from me today. Thank you so much.